Hey there! Today we have something fascinating. I was at the uh, Applebaum pen store, trying to lift it up, and I was allowed to borrow this. Now, uh, I think I can safely say that this is the heaviest pen box I've, I've ever seen, and this is only part of it. it, it the, the whole pen was an enormous cardboard box, and just for convenience sake I just took this. It's huge. Now, we're talking about a... Oh, man, I'm not, I'm not kidding, it's really heavy. Uh, we're talking about a Graf von Faber Castell Pen of the Year for 2016. Um, it came in this this white box, but that's of course just cardboard outer sleeve. Take the box out. Then there is another cardboard box. You can open that. You can't say this is not well wrapped. And then you have this extremely reflective surface, uh, which is a black giant box which pops open to reveal even more reflective surface. There's a little booklet, well, actually it's not that little, uh, which is stunning. I, I must say it's, it's stunningly executed. Uh, there's a lot in there about the history of the pen because there's a lot to this pen, including the uh, black lacquer screens. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, very nice, very nice little publication that they, they actually put a lot of thought and effort into. Uh, and then of course on here, uh, on its little bed, is the, uh, the, the, the pen. There is a, uh, a little uh, plaque. Yeah, it's, okay, well, I guess I have to lift up this thing again. I've definitely had my exercise for the, for the day. A little plaque and official things to make sure that it's really the pen that you have bought. Um, and then, of course, there is the actual pen. Now, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. I'm trying to reassemble the box. And then I'll do, oh, I'll do a writing sample. Don't worry. <laughs> it's not shit. Um, here we have the pen. Okay, this is the pen. This is the Platinum Edition. There's also a Special Edition. Um, a little bit of backstory, and I'm just going to... Uh, I, I guess I could read it from the, the booklet. Um, I haven't found the English yet. Let me see. Okay. Only French, Italian, etc. I couldn't find English that quickly, so I'm just going to read it from the website from Albuborn. Uh, it's interesting. The pen is kind of dedicated to Maria Theresa, the Empress, and she uh, she lost her husband. Okay. She furnished her former study with things that were the most precious to them both, thus ensuring the best way to express her love for Francis Stephen, uh, etc. Blah, blah blah blah. Now, here's the final thing: among the prized possessions of the huge collection at Schönborn Palace are valuable Chinese screens from the Imperial Manufactory in Beijing. Their black lacquer panels, masterly painted with gold using the Chinese Miao Jin, sorry if I butcher that technique were placed in panelling made from flamed maple and set with a gilded frame in 1770. Delicate gold paintings of landscapes, pagodas and floral patterns have been captivating the eyes since that time in the Vieux Lac room, uh, giving expressions of happy misfortune, transience and immortality. Now, they have tried to capture that in the pen. Um, so I'm just going to read that because it's a little easier than me trying to summarise all that. Um, the platinum plate variant of the Grafen Faber Castell Pen of the Year 2016 is also inspired by the design of the Vieux Lac Room in a unique way. Hand ground plates made from deep black onyx are set in elaborately created platinum plated frames in contrast with individually grained flamed maple in a fascinating manner. The platinum plated fountain pen is limited to 500 units, etc. Blah blah blah. So we have black onyx and we have flame maple to kind of commemorate those screens, the lacquered screens. Okay, let's have a look at this pen then. Starting with the cap, there you have some of the black stuff. I'm assuming that's onyx as well, but I'm not really sure uh, because they only talk about these plates. All right. Uh, then of course on the uh, the cap it says Graf and Faber Castell. There is a spring-loaded clip. A lot of the uh, Graf and Faber Castell pens have a clip like that, and I really like it. It's nice and springy, and it even has some uh, texture to the underside, so that it will not slip out of your pocket. That's nice attention to detail. 
Okay, then we have uh, the uh, the center band here. It says Grafenfarbe Castell and it says handmade in Germany. And then we have these very pretty Onyx plates. I'm doing this very slowly because it's a very heavy pen. And I don't want to drop it. So here we have that that uh, the flame maple, and there you have the Onyx. And I think it looks really neat. They have a piston turning knob. Actually, that's a blind cap. Uh, and then here you have in Roman numerals 1770. Okay. Now to fill this. This blind cap comes off and then you have a piston turning knob. So it's all pretty fancy. At the back of the turning knob, sort of a, a dimple with the Grafenfarbe Castell logo, the, the official coat of arms, uh, which I think is, is very neat. And then we have the cap, it unscrewed. The cap alone is heavy. It's a, it's a big pen, it's a heavy pen. A really nice large section, an ink window, and a nice 18 karat bicolor nib. What's on there? Uh, the coat of arms again, and pen of the year, and it says 18 karat medium 750 for the gold content. Uh, so a nice gold nib. And I have to admit that is a stellar nib. I, I have to... I was very pleasantly surprised. It, it writes really well. A lot of these kinds of pens, I think, not necessarily a graphic one because that would mean pens in this price range, are kind of like show pieces, but this pen actually writes and it writes well. Uh, if you want, it sort of posts, not very securely, but you can put that on there, but then you also have a really big pen. It's more than ample to hold. It's very heavy. It's very top heavy, but it's superbly robust. It really feels super, super heavy and nice, well made in hand. So you definitely buy something interesting, but I'll get back to that in a second. What do I like about that? What do I not like about that? I like pens that have a story. I like pens that are designed in such a way that you actually have something to it. Alami Safari is Alami Safari. And yes, it's designed as, you know, there's a whole design process behind it, but it is Alami Safari. This pen is made to commemorate something. To commemorate the love of two people, uh, to commemorate an art room. It has 1770 on there. It has, it has all those details. And a lot of people have pointed out to me that when I review an inexpensive pen, then I'm, the review is a lot shorter than when I review a pen like this. One of the reasons for that to happen is this kind of stuff. I mean, you get, you get the point. A safari doesn't commemorate love for anyone because they churn out a lot of them every year. All right? There's nothing wrong with safari, but it's a different type of pen. So there isn't that much to tell about it. There's a lot to tell about this. I try, I try to uh, uh, compress myself. Anyway, what do I like about it? It writes fantastically. It has a piston filler. It holds a nice amount of ink. It has an ink window, which is very nice because you can actually see how much ink you have left. And quite a lot of piston fillers that I've reviewed recently, for example, all those special fancy M800s from Pelican do not have an ink window, so you can't see how much you have left. I like this. I like that they have that. It's really hard to not sing praises of this nib, given how smooth it is, beautiful, writes well, good flow, superb. Really well tuned, really, really nice and smooth. I love it. I love the onyx, I love the, uh, the, the wood. It looks cool, it looks neat, it's so distinguished, and I mean, there is so much detail. Even here, on, the, on top of these uh, little panels, you see there is some work done. So, clearly, a lot of time and effort went into making this. It's also heavy and it's big, which are two things that I, I tend to appreciate in pens, so I, I really like that. Now, things I don't like so much. Um, to me, personally, these threads feel a little choppy, and I think the reason for that is that this is metal, and I think that what's in the cap is not. I don't know exactly what material that is, if it's plastic, which I assume it, it's, if it would be metal on metal, or plastic on plastic, I think it would be smoother than this. And I, I, I don't like that so much. It, it gives me the fear that at some point the cap may strip the threads and the cap will just fall off, especially given how heavy it is. But, you know, um, that's one thing. The blind cap is definitely nice. I, I don't know if you really need it. This could have just been a turning part. The nice thing about this uh, is that you don't accidentally uh, 
activate the piston and send ink everywhere. Okay, now the final thing we have to discuss is the price. 3500 euros. So this is not a pen that you just buy on a rainy Sunday afternoon because you're bored. At least I don't. Um, maybe you do. This is a special type of pen. It's a collector's piece. They make one of these every year. Uh, it, it's it's something fancy. It's it's something that that you you buy because you want to and not because you just want to have a, a quick pen. Uh, of course, that makes it not for everyone. It's very expensive. It's very non-affordable, really. Um, but as I said, it's a collector's piece. Does that warrant the price? Well. I, I think we all know the answer to that. Given the materials used, yes, it will be a bit more expensive. Is it that expensive? Are the costs that warranted? Realistically, probably not. And you know what? That goes for every single fountain pen. So it's not a unique thing to this pen, but it is very expensive. And as I said, a collector piece, so that's what you get. Uh, the final thing I actually wanted to mention uh, is that I, I really like the, uh, the, 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 the metal. But it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet. I don't think you can really see that. The camera probably won't pick that up. But in the, the right light, you definitely see it. It's not as terrible as I've seen on some other pens, but I definitely see fingerprints. And that can be a bit... You have a gorgeous pen and there's fingerprints all over it. it looks a bit weird. Uh, the Onyx is also a bit sensitive to it. So in all, uh, you may want to carry a cloth with this. But if you can afford this pen, you can surely afford a cloth, so that shouldn't really be a big deal. All right. Um, and actually, there is a. Uh, if you dig down really deeply in the box, my god, there's a whole other layer I haven't even seen yet. Um, there's actually a, a, a tray you can put all your pen of the year in if you want to. Uh, there is another booklet. My god, how, how did I miss it? Uh, there is the, uh, there's a, the sort of warranty card and more stuff. Um, but no cloth though. So, uh, the whole bunch of stuff which you could put to use. You know, you may even be able to use this as a cloth, this sort of floppy thing. Anyway, it's so exciting. Now I have yet another thing to, uh, to, to play with. Because of course you can put the pen in there and it works really, really well. And if you have ten of these, no, what is it? Two, four, six. If you have six pens of the year, you can uh, put them all on display. All right, a very, very, very kind thank you to Joost Appelbaum for lending me this pen. Obviously, it's it's not a cheap piece to just uh, uh, lend someone. So I, I really appreciate the, uh, the, the the trust you put in us. We'll make sure it gets back to you immediately as soon as possible. Um, we need to see a writing sample. Uh, I very much look forward to that because it's an exciting pen to write with. Measurements of the pen as well as high resolution pictures will be on the website, sbobrown.com. That's all that's to it. Hope this was useful so far, and I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Oops, knocked over the cap. Here we go with that really pretty pen. Graf von Faber Castell. The nib is medium, and this is the pen of the year. But to not make this writing sample last half an hour, I'm not going to write all that down. Although by all the time I've wasted by now, I guess I could have written it down and be still at the same point where I am now. This nib is an absolute pleasure to write with. Smooth, flows well, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So you pay a significant price, but you're not just buying a useless piece of art or anything. You buy a fountain pen and you get a fountain pen that writes really well. No skips, nothing. Perfect. Um, Rhodia paper, Pelican Royal Blue, not the wettest ink on the block. But that's a wet writer though. Um, I have just inked it up, but there's no ink in the feed. Okay. Line variation definitely is some, which is nice. And uh, reverse writing, you do go to a fine, but it's less smooth and you start to catch the paper a little bit. So that's not very feasible. 
Joost, thanks a lot for lending me this pen. I really appreciate it. I think it's a beautiful piece. Guys, I hope this was useful so far, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.